You're listening to The Virtuous Mind, a podcast from Providence Christian College that discusses all facets of the human experience and the liberal arts from a biblical worldview. I'm your host, Dr. David E. Alexander. What is love? Joining us on today's program is Professor Flora Crook, Assistant Professor of English and Literature at Providence Christian College. Throughout her years at Providence, Professor Crook has observed similarities and differences between classic authors' views of love and how their perspectives can help properly guide students' affections. Flora, welcome to the program. Hi, David. It's great to be here. What is love? That really is the age-old question, isn't it, David? Well, tell us about the authors and works you examine in the classroom. What insights into love do they give our students here at Providence? So, um, as you know, this past semester, I assigned a couple sections from the Confessions by Augustine to our English 102 class. And as you know, that's the logic, rhetoric, and research class. Yeah. So, the first part of this work is the one that everybody knows, right? It's the one that contains that beautiful and familiar phrase, You have made us and drawn us to yourself, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Yes. So that's the thing that everybody knows. Like, they always remember, like, oh, we have this restless heart. Yeah. But really what Augustine's doing is he's going beyond that in his text. He's looking at different things that his heart was actually looking to find rest in, ways in which he was looking for an improper love. In the text, Augustine examines the way in which his heart was seeking something that would bring him peace. And he does this by examining all the ways in which he sought the wrong thing. Um, And in the end, he comes back to that phrase, resting in you. So he's seeking something that's going to bring him peace and knows that that peace is only found in the love of God. So reading a few passages from the Confessions in the 102 class really made for great discussion in class. Um, simultaneously, at the same time, we also have this group of students and faculty reading the confessions informally before chapel. So that alone would have been a really great exploration of how language and literature help us reflect on our Christian lives. But at the same time, a few students and I were doing an informal study of Dante's Divine Comedy. The way in which the ideas and concepts of each of these two texts reflects and informs each other really made that reading of each of those texts a much richer experience. Interesting. Really, this shouldn't surprise us at all, as Augustine and Dante are both examining the sins of disordered love. The way in which love that is oriented towards sin leads to a a restlessness and a discomfort and and ultimately to damnation, but the way in which that love that's oriented toward God leads to salvation and leads to rest. So while Augustine examines his own life, Dante actually leads us on an imaginative journey from hell in the inferno to paradise in Paradiso. Both texts, though, are illustrating the dissatisfaction of pursuit of imperfect loves. Augustine illustrates how love, quote unquote, love for worldly things, whether it's fame, sex, knowledge, or even in that really famous case with the pears, a love of sin itself, ultimately leaves him empty and still searching. As Augustine recounts these situations, he praises God that he was saved from that cycle of wrongly oriented loves. Dante sinners in the inferno are eternally stuck in their sin and contrapasso, which literally means to suffer the opposite. So as his sinners are suffering in hell, they're regenerated to suffer again and again. But for them, there is no hope of actually changing their situation. And there's no end to suffering those sins that they were seeking in their lives. They're forever caught up in this misplaced love that led to their damnation. Dante's poem actually reads like an embodied picture of the observations Augustine makes in the Confessions. So in book three, Augustine, speaking metaphorically, describes his sin as an itching, inflamed, festering wound. At the same time that we were reading that in book three of Augustine's Confessions, we actually were reading in Dante's Inferno in Canto 29, a scene where the sinners are actually scratching at their scabs, never obtaining relief. So in both of these situations, scratching at sin does not satisfy the itch. There's no satisfaction in the pursuit of wrong love. So as we know, all sinners tend towards disoriented love. 
Both Augustine and Dante reassure us, though, that as our desires become more and more aligned towards God, as we place our love in alignment towards what God would have us do, we have a clear direction for our lives, and we can pursue a good, pure love that is only found in God himself. So Augustine says to God, it is on you that I want to gaze with eyes that see purely and find satiety and never being sated. With you is rest and tranquil life. Augustine knows that there is peace to be found, not just in the salvation itself, but peace even in the pursuit, pursuing God, loving God, feeling God's love towards us, actually brings us peace. So Dante, too, as he's beholding the Empyrean at the end of Paradiso, he says, But my desire and will were moved already, like a wheel revolving uniformly, by the love that moves the sun and the other stars. So both of these men are returning again and again to the idea that love of God actually orients their lives. Augustine returns again and again to his praise for God and the knowledge that it was God directing his ways so that he could find rest in God. Dante uses images of stars and navigation throughout the poem to illustrate that the pursuit of God alone can bring salvation. For both of these authors, loving God directs and gives meaning and purpose and peace in our lives. So David, you know that we all love the wrong things. Our students love the wrong things. They are presented with a myriad of wrong things to love, wrong things to focus on. We are constantly presented with things that that tempt us and draw our attention and draw our love. So what love becomes is the thing that draws us, that pulls us to it. And in this world where there are things to love that are not pure and not good, when we as individuals so often love the wrong things, we can be so grateful that God uses these timeless texts, these things by Dante and by Augustine and by these other great authors and wonderful minds that we're studying here at Providence. They remind us to correctly order our loves to love the things of God and not to love the things of the world. As we're studying different aspects of the liberal arts here at Providence, we can appreciate over and over again the way in which these different areas of learning overlap and point us back to the Creator. They remind us not only who we are, but more importantly, who God is, and the rest and peace that are only found in a pursuit and a love of God. You've been listening to The Virtuous Mind, a podcast from Providence Christian College. The mission of Providence Christian College as a reformed Christian institution is to equip students to be firmly grounded in biblical truth, thoroughly educated in the liberal arts, and fully engaged in their church, their community, and the world for the glory of God and for service to humanity. We'd love to have you visit our campus. Providence Christian College is now accepting applications for the upcoming semester. Contact an admissions counselor to learn more. Visit providencecc.edu.